worst enemy. And always in our shadow, that's succinct from Paul. That always in our shadow said, "New season, new hope. Look like the same old shit from KR until Hall and Childs." well done, uh, brought them back into it. Failed to make progress when getting the ball in first in golden point, allowing Catalan's one break for Maloney to pop over the winner. Page says, thought Catalan fully deserved that win. Can't expect to play for 10 minutes and come away with the points. I would ask Tom his opinion on the match, but the match didn't record when he was at work. <laughs> <laughs> Smiley face. Uh, safe to say he was a fuming and a hot ma- and a hot mess, just like his team. <laughs> uh, Tim G Radio said positives: one, that kit looks minty fresh; two, Ryan Hall; three, Ryan Hall's demoxinil-inspired hair gro- regrowth. That's it. That's all I've got. And uh, David Hunter says only Jimmy Maloney's boots saved cattle from an embarrassing full capitulation the Minty Rovers oh that's going to stick decided <laughs> to play just the final 20 and almost got a result they certainly bloody did um, I've got a I've got I've, not, I've noted down a terrible pun so, so I've, I've, I've got to use it I, I, I haven't seen anyone else has used it but um, I saw that Laguerre declared war against the chaos defence yes no I mean, it's a reference that I'm not getting. La Guerre is French for war. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah, right. Too, perhaps he was too educated for the... For... I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't learn about war in, in French class. I learned about, like, going to the swimming pool and stuff like that. Who <laughs> est la piscine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> J'aime jouer au tennis. Allez à la um, piscine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ou est le syndicat d'initiative, s'il vous plaît. Anyway. Um, J'aime le jambon. <laughs> oh, mais oui. Um, anyway. Um, Le Gay actually did look very good. Um, well, he played... His play looked good. I mean, visually, <laughs> he was, you know... A, a, some sort of awkward Napoleon Dynamite out there. But... <laughs> well, that's, that's cat kids nowadays. I'm, 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 not, I'm not in any place to start judging other people's uh, style decisions, uh, tousled curly hair or, or otherwise. But no, um, yeah, he was... He looked right, and he... You know, following on from what we just said about Broadbent, this is another young player who we haven't seen any of in Super League, this guy... And no. he looked ready. He looked there. And at the end of the day, if Tompkins doesn't get a head knock and Atta Morg doesn't come on, I don't know if they kick that winning field goal. It's Although, one of those... Though, if, if Tompkins doesn't get a head knock, I don't know if they score a try to level it up. So... <laughs> oh, come on. He's could have, would have, should have in it. But, but yeah. But, yeah, I mean, he, he, you know, considering he was on the pitch for about three minutes, um, yeah... He, 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 Morg made an impact as well so yeah it, it's you know it's important that these kind of these young talents get a chance I would say yeah and I was really excited by putting Morg on the bench I think it gave them a chance to do something if it was needed um, and it became it became needed I, I thought though Sam Tompkins was absolutely excellent for 50-55 minutes in, the, in this game and he was clearly the class act on the pitch uh, but Laguerre is the storyline um, you know the uh, and they combined didn't they for for the Whitley try which is one of the highlights of the game uh, Tompkins' is pass from nothing um, and Laguerre's offload I thought really great stuff um, I, I also thought Ben Gossie was decent too as, as captain but he plays very close to the line doesn't he and I'm not sure how helpful that is um, and, and I think it built into this environment where they did lose their discipline and they lost a player and do you know I I think Child made the right call there I think it, it got to the point where with Catalans you always risk the game getting out of hand when they start doing this sort of stuff. So, yes, there was a 
a bit of to and fro, and, and I certainly don't think it was, you know, all one-sided. But ultimately, Busquets is the man who ran into that, you know, into that kerfuffle. He's the one who escalated it by running in. And the way to de-escalate it is to Simbin, the man who escalated it. Yeah, no, completely. You can't... It's one of those things, isn't it, that you need to cut out. You need to cut out those players who instigate, you know, an escalation and, and it's the players who run in. It's, it's, as you say, it's often the second and third player in who actually makes it worse um, rather than the protagonists who were actually initially involved. So, yeah, for me, a yellow card was completely fair enough. Um, I had no uh, I had no issue with that at all. What I did have an issue with, as you said, is Catalan, 24 points up, half an hour to go, and I just don't quite know how they lost control of the match. You know, considering the kind of p- calibre of the players that they've got, the Maloney's of, the, of this world, he should just be kicking KR to death, you know. I know he, he, we, I know we're not forming scrums at the moment, and therefore you, it's not quite the same tactic as it, as it is in normal times, but there's no way they should have fallen into the hole that they did. Not with um, the players that they have in those half-back positions. Like, no, exactly. No, and it's not a young... I know there was a couple of young French players that we've talked about, but it's not a young side. It's not an inexperienced side. No, the, the, there's no excuse for it, really. Because, um, you know, the, you know, with the best one in the world, 28-4, if you kind of hold KR out for 10 minutes, they're going to they're gonna kind of mentally quit on the game, aren't they? But they got to try. Then they got another one pretty much straight away. And before you know it, they're kind of within a couple of scores. And, yeah, you, 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 they couldn't afford to give it, um, the opposition a sniff, but they did. Well, there so... was a touch of fortune, wasn't there, in how they came back into it. I mean, Mikey Lewis's try was, you know, really good play from the young, uh, from the youngster. You know, again, poor decision-making when it comes to hair. But um, his execution there on that play, it was all him, that, and it was very good. Um, Ryan Hall's first try, though, was a piece of luck, wasn't it? It was a, it was a drop ball. It was uh, uh, it was Dean Fare kind of trying to recreate Wembley in 2013 every time he had the ball. Um, I think he needs to calm down a little bit with his discipline when he's got ball in hand. But, um, but yeah that gave him the foothold and then the off the back of that the game wouldn't have come close if Julian Busquet hadn't have ran in um, but it but it did and Ryan Hall's the final thing to talk about sorry it was Ryan Hall's first try in the first half wasn't it was off the error um, sorry not the second half that was the second try was the one that was the bouncing ball weren't it that was a little bit fluky but sometimes it goes for you um, but but yeah so You've got to be impressed with what Ryan Hall did. Yeah. Nothing was flash, but he finished him. Yeah, and to be fair, that that's that's how you know that's how he made his reputation at Leeds. Uh, you know, you know, not necessarily flash tries. You know, he, he had his fair share of them, but but yeah, you know, the guy was a finisher, and you know, and he lost that down under, but but he's back. He's he's back and he's minty fresh. And at this rate, he'll be Super League's top try scorer in two weeks. So, no. <laughs> We got the cup in two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's, been... it's, it's, it's good to see him back. Yeah, and you know we talked a bit about Ar- Artemorg, the bouncing off that tackle, finding that space, really great stuff, and then finally some composure from one of these experienced halfbacks and, and slots over the, the drop goal to to win it. Um, I never felt like Hull KR were good enough to win it once. Rovers once Catalans were back to the full complement. I know they scored the try just as it was basically the play of the ball after Busquet came back on the pitch. But um, yeah, it always felt like Catalans should have have closed it out it, it, eventually, and and they did. So you got to credit them for picking themselves back up after falling apart. But it's worrying that they fell apart. So let's see how they get on. Shall we, shall we move into Sunday? Yep, so the third day of our weekend in Leeds, um, it was Hull this FC. This week in Leeds. <laughs> yeah, I, won't, I, won't, I won't wish that on anyone. It was Hull FC 22, Huddersfield 10. It was 12-0 to Hull FC at half-time. Robert Hicks, 
unruly beard and hair <laughs> intact was in charge of this one. Um, I believe the stats arrived fairly late, Mark, on this one. Yeah, we haven't got the team stats, but some individual ones. Carlos Tumavavi, 166 metres. Josh Reynolds on debut, one try in 123 metres. Josh Griffin, one try in 114 metres. And Yeme, Danny Houghton, one try assist, 55 tackles. Uh, for the Giants, Jerry McGilvery with 148 metres. And Josh Jones against his former employer, one try assist, 190 metres, three successful offloads. So plenty of fan views on this as well. Macker again, a really good game. Hull played well. Our defence was pretty much impeccable. <laughs> Our attack was good. Um, I hope we beat Salford next week. Let's think about next week already. Yep, Scoot said, good game. Nice to see our defence better than last year on the whole. Think our spine worked well, but definitely looking forward to Reynolds settling in better. Lane looked massively improved too. Carsten says, FC start the season with a bang, but that's nothing new. Huddersfield's performance is worrying, though. I expected them to be better, as I do from Robert Hicks' shaving performance. <laughs> Page said, first, great first match of the season. Thought Reynolds had a great game. Defence was on point for 70 minutes. Shame we couldn't keep a clean sheet. Bring on Salford next week. And Joshua's granddad says, the grub, the snake and the ice man, along with a much improved goal line defence, saw FC comfortably home against Watson and his band of mercenaries. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you show me a rugby league player who isn't a mercenary. It's like um, they're all getting paid a fuck ton of money, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Only disappointment was allowing two cheap late tries. Um, and at Joe New 86 said, great start from the black and whites, plenty of intensity in defence and some promising signs in attack. Looking forward to seeing Connor, Snide and Reynolds' combination blossom as the season progresses. Well, I have to say on this one, this wasn't the most engaging game, I, I have to say. Um, but Huddersfield would probably go down as my biggest disappointment of the weekend in terms of when you look at their team... I know they were missing Caesar. That's obviously a big miss for them, even yeah. though Watson wasn't didn't want to make a big thing of it in the post match discussion, but I mean it is a big thing. <laughs> the the guy was a contender for Man of Steel, you know what I mean? You're gonna miss a play like that. And they did feel disjointed, even though they had field position at times. But yeah, just... I, I didn't know who was running the show between Cogger and Russell. Um and then and clearly they haven't had much practice time together. No, no, and yeah, they're, I, I haven't. I've seen Cogger a little bit in the NRL. He never impressed me massively. Um, and obviously, um, I think he's just a young player, isn't he? So yeah, it, it, it's difficult, I would say, for me. And when you think about the sort of experience in that spine, he was poor. Gaskell was the one kicking out on the full. Yeah. He was the one popping up in the wrong position constantly. Yeah, they, they, they just didn't seem... I, I don't know if they're, they're planning to have Gaskell at full back most of the year, I don't know. Not anymore. But no, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but no, for, for me, FC were the most composed and together of the two sides. Um yeah, anything that Jake Connor's involved in where he's not getting involved in, in, in a scuffle, um, <laughs> FC tend to benefit from. Um, honestly, and Robert Hicks managed him quite well because he did seem like he was getting a bit too fired up. And yeah. I don't know if it was Hicks's lack of grooming that made him sort of cheer up when they had a little chat or what Hicks was saying, but I think he did like calm the the storm there before it yeah because it was against his former side and trying to make a point and he kind of got a bit over the top about fucking walking through a massive gap um so yeah no if if um, if fc can keep uh can keep jake and and josh calm and influencing the game as they did in this one then then they'll do well um yeah because both yeah. are very good yeah, yeah. For a debut, I thought Josh Reynolds was was pretty good. Didn't trip anybody. Didn't kick anyone in the head. Um, <laughs> so that that has to go down as a win, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, for me, just FC were the better team. And, you know, Giants, a couple of scores in garbage time 